Hey everyone, this is Steve Losh, and this is the first video in a little series that will hopefully become a weekly thing for me, and I'm going to call it Sunday School. Um, I'm going to try to post a video every week, and they're going to be on kind of a wide range of topics. Uh, this one's a little more computer science-y. Uh, next week, um, I'll probably do one on photography. And they're all going to kind of just be short lessons that uh, hopefully you can take 10 minutes out of your day and learn something. Um, so, today, I'm going to talk about um, big O notation. So, you're all probably seen this if you're a programmer. Um, things like ON or ON squared, things like that. And we've all seen this, and you know, if you haven't read the Wikipedia article on it, go ahead and do that. Um, what I want to do in this video is give you kind of a gut feeling as to why these things behave the way they do. We all know that ON squared grows faster than ON, um, and it's probably obvious why that happens, but um, what might not be obvious immediately is why something like O2 to the N grows much, much faster than O N squared, right? So let's, let's, uh, let's start by looking at O N. And in this case, I'm actually, uh, I'm going to do O 2 N just so that we always have a two in here, just so that we can compare apples to apples. So how does this grow? Well, if we think, um, if we think of, you know, the values that this could take on, the n could be could start at 1, right? And so if n starts at 1, we have two items, right? The value of the equation is 2, right? Now, what happens when we go to 2? Well, we get 2 times 2, right? And that's 4. So we add another two items. Nothing too crazy here, right? What happens when we go to 3? When we go to 3, it's 2 times 3, which is 6, so we need to add another 2. And when we go to 4, right, 4, we add another 2. Every time, we just add 2. Every time we add 1 to n, the result gets 2 more items. So it kind of grows like this, right? Okay, let's look now at something a little more interesting. Oh, n squared. How does this work? Well, when it's 1, right, 1 is trivial. We just have one, one thing, right? 1 squared is 1. We have 2. What does 2 squared actually mean? It, well, it means a square with 2 units per side, right? So each side here is 2 units wide, right? So this time we added 3. Remember before, we were just adding 2 every time? This time, we added 3. So what happens when we add 3 squared? Or sorry, yeah, well, what happens when we do 3 squared? Well, we have to make a square with 3 items per side, right? This time, you can see here, we added 5 items. So let's keep track of the number of things we're adding, actually. The first time, we started out with 1. Let's not worry about that. But then we added three items. We added five items. On the, the next time we incremented the number, let's, let's go up to four. Now we need a square of size four. This is where the word square comes from, by the way. Back when the Greeks were inventing geometry, I mean, that's the, the number four squared literally means a square with sides of four, right? And so we can see here we added, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items. You can probably see a pattern here, but let's just do one more just to make it obvious. When n becomes five, we get five squared, and we get 25. So we can do a square with five, side, with five items per side. Five, one, two, three, four, five, okay. And this time we added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine items. And I'm sure you can see the pattern. So, whereas before, I didn't actually call this out before because we were it was always the same, but maybe I should do that. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, in a linear uh, growth, we add the same amount each time. So in this case, we're adding two every time. Right? When you have quadratic growth, or O n squared, 
you're not just adding the same amount, the amount that you add every time grows, in this case, also by two, right? We're getting all the odd numbers here. And so if you think about it in your gut, you can think of it as a square that just keeps getting bigger, and every level you add one layer to the square. Okay, so now let's go to the last version of growth, which is exponential growth, which is the real killer, right? If you have a sorting algorithm that is, it takes exponential growth, not quadratic, but exponential, you really don't want to run it on, you know, big data sets. So this is O2 to the N, and at first glance, it might not be completely obvious to you that O2 to the N is actually worse than O N squared, but you'll see why it is in a second, and I hope this will give you a gut feeling as to why it actually is just so much worse. So let's start off at 1. To the first, we have 2, right? Nothing crazy there. Let's, let's go to the next one. 2. Well, 2 squared, right? So we started off, let me, let me take a second and draw this out. We started off with 2, right? That's 2 to the first. What is 2 squared? Well, we take that and we multiply it by 2, right? So we get 2 times 2, so we get 4. So we have to add another 2, right? Okay. What happens when we go up to three? Well, we take this whole thing and we multiply it by two, right? Because two to the third is just two times two times two, and this here is just two to the second, right? So two to the third is obviously just one more uh, multiple of two. So what happens? So basically we take our previous one, which is this little square over here, and we double it. So I just copy that square. So we had a square of four here. When we go to three, we have another square of four. Okay, let's go up to the next level. What happens when n gets to four? Well, once again, we take two to the third, and we double it, right? So we take this block here, this block here, and we just double it. So let me draw that out. Okay, let's go to five. You can probably see the pattern here. Okay, let's go to five. So again, take this whole thing and double it. Easy way to double it, just copy the same square or rectangle in this case, it's not always gonna be a square because of the way I'm drawing it. One, two, th four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, and as you can see, I, uh, I'm i not gonna draw out six, uh, but you can see that we're already far beyond where we were before, right? I believe that's right. Yes. We already have more than we did before, right? So let, let's count. Here we have 25, obviously, right? And here we have four times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four times eight, which is 32, right? Yeah, I can't do math in my head. Um, so we're already higher. And now let's look at something interesting. Let's look at how much we're adding in each step like we did for uh, previously. So how much are we adding in each step? Well, when we go from one to two, we add two. Right? So at first, we're adding fewer items, right? At first, in o n squared, we added three. But then what happens? Well, we double, right? So we had four, and we doubled it, so we added four. And we're still, we're still uh, behind, right? Then what happens? Well, we double it again, so we had eight. So when we go up to o, oh, two to the fourth, we add eight. And now, you can see that was larger than before. And so what happens then? Well, we have to double it again and we add 16. Right? And now you can see that, I mean, this is, this is just going to increase by 2 every time, where this is going to double every time. You're going to multiply by 2 every time. The amount that you add gets multiplied by 2 every step. Right? And so that's why exponential growth is just so much larger and explode so much more once you get high enough than uh, quadratic growth. So you can even think about this as a physics problem if you want. You can think about these as velocities and accelerations, right? If you just have linear growth, that's like having a constant velocity, 
right? You have a you know a car, um, and it's it's driving along at a certain a certain pace, right? If if we're talking about linear growth, O n, then it just has a constant velocity, right? The amount of distance it covers at every time step is the same, right? If it's covering three meters per second, then it or let's use the same number. If it covers two meters per second, then its velocity is two meters per second, and in every second you add two, right? Now, if we move up, excuse me, to um, quadratic growth here, we don't have a constant velocity, right? We have acceleration now. So here we have velocity, we don't have acceleration. When we're talking about uh, quadratic growth, we have velocity and we have acceleration, right? So we have a velocity, and then that velocity increases by a set amount every time, right? So our velocity might start out as three meters per second, but our acceleration is two meters per second squared. So our velocity increases by two meters per second. And it's not perfect because, you know, it, think of it as binary, but whatever, um, you get the idea. But so our acceleration is constant, right? Maybe I should, maybe I should do a, a little bit of a table here. Um, so, Make a quick little table. Sorry, I'm bad at drawing straight lines. Um, so make an entry for linear, quadratic growth, and exponential growth. Right? Okay, so I got my little table. And we're going to talk about the velocity and acceleration as if these were cars. Right? So <clears throat> in linear growth, you have a constant velocity, and you have a zero acceleration. Right, you're not accelerating. Your velocity is just constant. Right. Um, in quadratic growth, your velocity is increasing, and your acceleration is constant. Right. It's always increasing by the same amount. Right. But in exponential growth, not only is your velocity increasing, but your acceleration is also increasing. Your acceleration is not constant anymore. So you're accelerating faster and faster, which means your velocity is just going to explode. So I hope that helps. Um, I hope that helps give you a gut feeling about wh why these things behave the way they do. Sometimes, you know, we can look at tables and numbers and see that they behave that way, but sometimes it's just easier to draw things out and see pictures and relate it to real-world things. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Uh, post a comment or find me on Twitter. Um, like I said, the next week... Next week's uh, video is probably going to be on photography. Uh, if you have any other topics you want me to cover, uh, let me know. Cool. Thanks. Hope you liked it.